Alrighty, Suzuki freak maintenance people that are like me, and that's the reason you're watching this. Looky here. See that? Oh my god. There's the VST tank completely loose. Completely loose. There's more god dang hoses and bullshit pipes and clips and snaps and screws than you can imagine. Thanks for stopping by. But that VST tank, I can't even get in here because look, that's how much space I have to work between my kicker. And it is a royal biatch. Your fuel cooler goes behind your VST tank. This is the VST tank. Vapor separator tank. Uh, you got to undo your Tupperware. You've got to undo all your low pressure fuel filter, high pressure fuel filter. So, um, just so you know, if you want to try this yourself, if you've ever run into a problem taking the fuel cooler out because it's clogged. With St. John's River, St. John's River crap. Here it is. You can see mine says cleaned out 9 two, uh, 2019. And then of course I marked it. Uh, water goes in, water out. So there you go. Now watch this. This is the reason I did the flushing all the time. I know, I, not a ton of water is going in here. All right, not a ton of water. You've got fuel on one side going in this way, and you got water going in here, watering, water exiting out the bottom, and fuel exiting out the bottom. But, see what I did? I had to drill it out here because it has a plug in it and I put JB Weld. That's because I had to clean it out. Well, what you're going to end up doing most likely is using the muffs down here on your lower unit. Turn that water on full blast. If you have a Suzuki that doesn't have the low water pickup, that's what really sort of keeps you from using that and it being reliable. Because they say, just put tape over it. Just put tape over it. Eh, tape will hold. Yeah, well, that's the reason I run mine out in the barrel. You'll end up putting the muffs on if you don't have this low water pickup. This is the low water pickup right in here, folks. This is your regular. Oh, geez, it's a low water pickup of another two inches. I wish I didn't have it because I'd just as soon put the muffs on over here and when you put the muffs in here, this is directly related here. Water just shoots from here up into here. And uh, water pours out here and they just say, put tape over it. Well, your, your eighth anode is on the other side over here. It's on the other side. That's where your eighth anode is. That's the reason I run mine out in a barrel. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to swap out this one. I'm probably going to drill out the JB weld that I did before what, because I didn't have one and I need to unclog this. And I'm going to clean this up, probably thread it and just put plugs in it. Gives me, buys me some time. That's a $90 object right there. And on your VST tank, uh, it goes like this. It goes behind all this. I'm going to put in the new one, and I'll show it all when it's all buttoned up. Well, there you go, folks. There's the VST tank. Right there is the fuel cooler. It's a brand new one. I just put it in. It's a royal pain in the butt. Royal, 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 royal. I think the next time I'll just pay somebody to do it because it's such a headache. 
I'm just checking for leaks now. Got the Tupperware off on this side. I don't see anything. So I'm just checking around to see what the story is. I'm going to check my old fuel cooler. See, these are the lines right here. These are the lines bringing water to the fuel cooler from right here. And that leads around the back. And it goes up to a splitter, goes into here, then goes in there. And at the very bottom of your fuel cooler, there's the drain line that goes out. And at the top, which right there, right there is where the fuel's going in. And I put my fingers on that to see if I could feel any temperature difference or anything, but I don't. At least I know that it's a brand spanky new one going into uh, spring and summer. This is the JB Well plug. JB Weld plug that's been in here holding it because I had to I had to plug this because we drilled out the Suzuki plug that was in there and it was like a pressed aluminum this isn't under huge pressure folks so gotta at least drill it out on each end because what we're looking for here is to see if there's any cloggage. All right, you can see that's my JB Weld plug. Like I said, what I did is I drilled on a, an aluminum or something plug that was pressed in with the machine. And I'm, when I say cloggage, I mean, I just want to see if there's any crap in it. Hopefully not, since I've been running my engine out and the fresh water and, and since I changed this out back in July, no, August, no, September of 2019, um, since September, I have been basically running the engine out in the barrel. Make a little center hole. Alright, here's the, uh, it's open on each end, so here's the blow test. A viewer had a very good idea. Since I'm going to swap these back and forth, what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to tap that with some threads and I'm just going to put in a little aluminum plugs. There you go. So I'll always have a clean one. It has nothing to do with the engineering. What it's all about is where I run my boat. It has really nothing else to do with that except for the water where I am is pure mud and tannin so you know if you're if you're running sort of like you know a normal place like with clean clear water let's say like lake pontchartrain louisiana where i'd like to be so, you know, i keep all my bits doesn't everybody keep all their bits like that there we go push the rest of that jb weld out jb weld is some fantastic stuff folks I'm looking to see if there's any serious debris in there. So what I gotta do, this is how you're gonna be learned of stuff. Because guess what? If you live in Jacksonville, this is probably not what a mechanic's gonna do. They're just gonna get you for another $90 fuel cooler and, and whatever it costs, $300 at 100 an hour to Pull that VST tank, change this out, 
and check all your shit, you know what I mean? All right, so this is how I cleaned it out before. Cleaned out the old water side here. Because that's a really good idea, you know, to uh, have this one always as a spare, just on hand, even if you have to hand it to a mechanic. Pretty dirty, pretty dirty. When I changed this out before, you could not see through it, you couldn't you couldn't blow through it, you couldn't do anything. It was completely clogged up. Well, let me tell you the difference of maybe, or the reason why it was clogged up, is I never ran the engine in a barrel. I literally called Suzuki and said, hey, uh, you totally recommend, totally recommend using your flush ports, right? Yes, we use the flush ports, uh, yes, yes, that's, use the flush ports in this, and, uh, and the, the muffs on the bottom. And I said, well, that's sort of a pain, because then you have to tape up, if the tape holds, low water pickup. Oh, you've got one of those, okay, uh, and, uh, well... Uh, yeah, that would be the second recommended uh, or the, would be using the flush ports or whatever. And this is years ago because I've had the engine, you know, going on six years. So what it boils down to is where I fish, obviously, in that nasty, nasty dirt water. You know, really the only way is on the muffs and then tape it up. Tape up the low water pickup. Do something. And I actually found... Um, a guy will make you a mold of your nose cone of your, or your lower unit there, and that will stop it up or something. I, I really looked around. I did, I did some serious research. I got the barrel. If you're running it out on your, on the muffs, and then you're taping it and everything, there's always that chance of it not getting enough water. And I don't like that chance. So... I bought the Rubbermaid barrel that you've seen in many videos. It's a 70 gallon Rubbermaid. There's other ones. You don't have to get one like mine because mine, I got for 90 bucks delivered to my house on Amazon. I've gone out there and looked and now 90 bucks turned into 289.99 on Amazon. What? I mean, that's always weird how these prices change. But there is other barrels and to fit a 250 lower unit with the prop on, the 70 gallon really sort of works out. You could probably get by with a 60 gallon or something. And of course you want it high enough, you know, to go over your water pickups. And then you just drop the hose in it and start it, you know, fill it up and start it up. Um, so that's one of the best ways that you can flush your engine. Around here, around here, this is, basically for Jacksonville people, St. John's River people. Um, not necessarily anybody else because I don't know the water that anybody else is in. I guess what makes it bad is heat, salt, and mud. There you go. I'm going to tap this. I'm going to put in a little aluminum plugs, and that is the conclusion. I hope you learned something in the last two videos, the flushing and the fuel cooler thing but the reason I went through all of this is real simple after five years of using the flush port on the Suzuki and not running it after, and it's sitting in the Florida sun and the heat and all this this thing stopped up with salt and debris and mud and everything because I have a picture of us drilling it out, you should see the stuff just pouring out, and I'll put that picture in this video.
Heed the warning, Jacksonville people. Jacksonville fishermen, Jacksonville boaters, heed the warning. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on a happier fishing note, I'm sure, possibly next. Yep, she's clean as a whistle now.